94 years, what was your favorite song? What's your favorite song? Only 91. 91. Irene Goodnight. Irene Goodnight. Who was your favorite president? Truman. Truman was his favorite president. And the Democrat at that. Uh, being Republican, I would always cherish uh, Truman because I was on uh, the Horn of France waiting to board a ship to invade Japan. My, uh, I was train, training to advance to shoot the Japanese by playing baseball. So I was really good at, at uh, training. And he dropped the atomic bomb and the war was over. And I celebrated with a bottle of wine and then shipped back to Germany. So I still love him even today. Was 9-11 worse than Pearl Harbor, or was Pearl Harbor worse than 9-11? I say Pearl Harbor, the guys are still down in the sunken ships, and I don't like the Japanese walking around taking pictures in Pearl Harbor. <laughs> okay, now you lived through the Depression, and you lived through this last recession. Can you compare the two? Well, uh, there was times when we had nothing to eat, and that was the first depression. The second depression, I didn't notice so much. <laughs> Period. I ate. So you had a brief political career. Uh, could you kind of explain to me your political career, how you how it went down? Well, we were in the PTAs at school, and I told Irene, they, I ran for an office one time, and I came very close to winning. I was 8,000 votes short. <laughs> so, the powers to be redid the district for me. And I told Irene, hey, I'm going to go and make my money down there, and I don't even have to show up. I'll just get elected. All right, Obama. And, 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 and Irene said, I ain't going to help you. I said, hey, Irene, hey, we got money coming. I don't have to work. I ain't going to help you. I said, okay. If I ain't gonna run, you can run. No, 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 no. Yes, she finally said she would, and she won, and she uh, would have done it for nothing. She enjoyed it so much, and, and, and did a pretty good job. And, and as uh, far as snow, she got more toilets and women bathroom than anybody in the whole world. How were you both the Army and the Navy? I was in the Navy Air Corps, and they were so good that they didn't get shot or killed by the Japanese. So they didn't need pilots anymore. They said, hey, you guys can resign if you want to. And I said, good idea, I'll resign. And I went home, and I found out I was drafted. <laughs> well, I thought, well, I'm a hot shot pilot. I'll get rid of the Air Force. Of course, they put me in basic training in the woods, walking around in the mud, firing empty rifles. And I said, I made a mistake. <laughs> I should have stayed in the Navy. But... How did you meet Irene? Oh. I decided 
I was going to go to the government and make $10,000 a year. Well, no, my sister worked for aeronautical chart plant. I went to work there, and in six months I said, where's my raise? He said, I'm sorry, but you had to be here eight months before you get a raise. And I was making $2,600 a year, not even close to $10,000 a year. I decided, and there was Irene taking my picture uh, for, what? <laughs> she was straight. Anyway, she was a photographer there, and I thought she was kind of cute. And I said, uh, uh, Irene, hi. <laughs> and that's thing you know, she's driving my stock car and wrecking it. Well, I know uh, when you, you did get sent over to Europe, uh, the second time you got to the uh, services, and uh, even though the fighting was over, you had some interesting stories. Um, watching over a group of Germans working on a mine, and also that story about the Jeep. Yeah. We uh, be tell them about these guys and tell them that the Germans always kind of put us down. Oh, we're better soldiers individually. And, and I had these guys working in a park at eight cents an hour. They worked, and they didn't like it. But anyway, this guy was saying, yeah, we're really better soldiers in the venture. I said, here, take my carbine and shoot that tin can. <coughs> and I had my 45 in my hand in case he put it on me. So he shot at the tin can. Of course, he missed it. And he shot again, he missed it. So I said, here, let me show you something. I grabbed hold of it. I shot, I shot from the hip, kabang. Yeah. 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 It landed again. Oh, wow. Oh, look at it again. Oh. Shot again. And he said, oh. nobody said another word. They all worked. Nobody complained. Everybody was happy with eight cents an hour of work. No more telling me I'm no better than me. So, so Walter, did, did you like the Germans? Not really, but I enjoyed it. my Jeep. That's a good story. That is so... That's a good story. Anyway, uh, I told uh, the party surgeon said, when you go home, can I have your Jeep by his head? Oh, let's think about that. Okay, you can have my GPA if. Give me a private room in a barracks. Don't make me work. No detail. I can do what I want. He said, okay. I was riding high. I did as I pleased. And I think they helped me get a hold of those servers. So. He would come over to our house on Kings Highway and we would all jump on Uncle Waller. There were four girls. One would grab one arm, one would grab the other, one would be on the back, and the little one would be hanging on his belt. And he would spin around and we would be like the flying turns in the old Cars Park Highlands. And we, he was so much fun. He plays harmonica and sing and he was just never, you could never keep him down. And then he'd get on his hands and knees and take us all for back, horsey back rides until he, you know, we, we got tired and we probably went to bed. But Uncle Waller was the fun uncle and he's always been such an inspiration and you could never keep him down. That's the thing I remember. Walter, as many times as you've been down to the farm and I know you from there, and I know how much you love free. <laughs> so what is the best free thing you've ever gotten in your life? Best question ever. I don't think I've ever answered. 
anything. <laughs> if you were telling all of your grandchildren here and all the younger people here, all to live to be 90 plus years old, 91 and a half. what would you tell them to do? Well, I would start drinking. <laughs> Thank you. 